Please welcome with me Rimantas Ashadrus. He is a member of the ECA's Chamber 4, which deals with regulation of markets and the competitive economy, and also responsible for institutional relations. And he formerly served as Minister of Finance for Lithuania. You have the floor, please. Thank you, Melinda. <laughs> Thank you for introducing me so enthusiastically. Uh, I'm uh, uh, a bit in trouble uh, because it is also a great honor to be actually the first speaker for the uh, discussion of today's conference. Uh, but also, also it's a challenge because uh, I represent the audit institution. And the common understanding, common knowledge about auditors is uh, that, uh, and this is true, uh, they are professionally skeptical which is not common in any good company around the table. Uh, they like very much reading, uh, reading, but reading literally, black letters on a white paper, and uh, 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 trying to apply a simplistic approach without elaborating what has been in the mind of the authors who wrote the text. So we like reading uh, legal texts as they are. So, as a consequence, uh, perhaps we should be uh, boring and unfriendly. Uh, I uh, will try not to be boring. Uh, of course, uh, my task is to be a bit unfriendly, otherwise there will be no impulse for the <laughs> subsequent, subsequent uh, panel discussion. Uh, so, as uh, uh, Gabriel already said, and, and Melinda reminded, we published very recently a report on EOPA. Uh, the first question that we received from the press after the publication was, okay, you already audited EOPA, so now uh, Mr. Bernardino, <laughs> Mr. Parente should be fired, <laughs> shouldn't they? Uh, I think uh, um, it is again expression of a simplistic approach uh, to the auditors and to the auditing function. And then this uh, uh, simply makes me to introduce in few sentences the institution I represent, the European Court of Auditors. It is a European institution, absolutely independent, established by the treaties establishing the European Union, and uh, it acts as an external auditor for the European Union, for European Union funds, budgets, uh, and assets. Uh, it is equally independent as uh, are independent the supreme national audit institutions in all the member states. They are our very good partners. Uh, we cooperate, but we are by no means uh, the chief, uh, chief supervisor or chief, chief auditor in, union, in the economic union, uh, in, the econ in the European Union. Uh, Another stereotype is uh, um, quite common even uh, among people dealing very much with, with quite sophisticated matters that uh, Gabriel just described as non-understandable uh, to children and even adults uh, in the bus stop. Uh, this is uh, a stereotype that auditors are always like big four. They are taking accounts, they are uh, recalculating invoices and that's it. Uh, with the European Court of Auditors as a public auditor, it's uh, a bit different. Uh, a huge part of our works uh, are performance audits. One of the examples of the performance audit is uh, just the OPA audit uh, that we published uh, very recently. Uh, and we do these performance audits uh, that uh, tend to uh, assess the performance of uh, budgetary programs, uh, of European policies, uh, and performance of also organizations established by the European Union um, and to check whether they are really working for citizens uh, and uh, achieving the objectives that have been prescribed by the regulations, uh, whether all money is not only properly spent, which is an easy task to, to, to check, but whether it uh, has been well invested and gives the return that was expected before the investing. It is uh, the job that we're doing with our performance audit. And our performance audits, uh, quite recently, uh, they uh, uh, spread uh, from 
other areas to a very complicated and highly technical area and for, of financial and economic governance of European Union, economic and monetary union, uh, of activities uh, of different mechanisms that have been established uh, to make uh, the, uh, um, the European mechanism function. Uh, uh, among uh, some examples uh, in this area, uh, Quite, quite a number. Uh, for example, we have audited uh, European uh, uh, supervisor authorities like uh, EBA. Uh, we are finishing the audit of the EBA stress test. Uh, ESMA was also on our scrutiny, EIOPA. Uh, but we also uh, stepped in into the functioning of the banking union, single supervisory mechanism and single resolution mechanism, not from monetary point of view, but just from uh, organizational efficiency, which is also important. You can describe, uh, you can build up a theoretical construct that in practice uh, uh, will, not, uh, will not work. So our work in this area uh, is quite, uh, quite important. Now, going back to insurance sector. Uh, European Court of Auditors uh, is very well placed uh, for two reasons. Uh, first of all, we have uh, multi-country, cross-border perspective. We can look at all the member states. Our mandate allows us uh, to work in all 28 states, but also with the European institutions. The second issue is uh, uh, that, in fact, what we try to do uh, by arguing for uh, accountability and transparency is to work for the people, for this uh, young, pretty child, for the citizen, European citizen. And uh, uh, to some extent, we uh, constitute this missing link between a common and sometimes very primitive understanding of the people about the processes going on and very sophisticated mechanisms that are behind, behind these processes. So therefore, I think our simplistic approach, reading black letters, uh, justifies itself. Uh, and now concerning the issues that we are going to discuss today. So uh, cross-border cross -border character of the insurance. Uh, and of the financial markets as well. It proved to be underestimated uh, before the crisis. And just the crisis brought reality to everybody, to administrators, to public sector, but also to businesses in, in all the financial, uh, financial markets, be it uh, securities or, or insurance or banking. Uh, and in all these areas, uh, people immediately understood that something should be improved. Something means uh, better coordination between the member states. If we talk about single market, we, tr uh, we should try to stick these 28 parts uh, that sometimes are extremely different. Uh, we uh, try to, to stick them together. Um, in the insurance sector, what we found, and again, uh, auditors are very boring people, they collect evidence. Uh, the uh, uh, reports that we are writing, they are not forward-looking. Uh, this is uh, the task of, of uh, uh, Gabriel, and he uh, played this role, I think, extremely well uh, by giving us a perspective of development. Uh, we are mainly people ex post, uh, and we look how the mechanism that was designed and uh, where uh, much of the enth enthusiasm of policymakers was put in, uh, how this functions in reality. So uh, uh, multinational cross-border character of insurance business supervised uh, by national competent authorities uh, under the guidance uh, and help of EOPA, it has flaws. Uh, and this is again our advantage of the Court of Auditors that we not only check invoices but we can deliver messages to policymakers about systemic issues. And this is what, uh, what we did uh, in this report. Uh, let me give three short examples that we will be uh, elaborating quite in detail, I think, uh, um, in, in the panel. First is uh, supervisory approaches. It's natural that national competent authorities have different supervisory approaches. And uh, for example, if you split, try to classify, to make a taxonomy, some 
uh, apply a risk-based, forward-looking approach. Uh, others uh, tend to be more legalistic uh, and com uh, compliance-oriented. Uh, the uh, action of the national competent authorities also differs, and it depends uh, not only on the qualities of the people working there, but also on the legal structure in, national, uh, in the member states, which all have uh, their national regulations. This is uh, all about supervisory convergence. Uh, EOPA did a very good job, and this is acknowledged by the auditors that checked this. So uh, I can assure you that there is no reason to fire <laughs> neither Mr. Bernardino nor Mr. Parente nor any, anybody else. So uh, this is one, uh, one thing. We should think and should invent real methods to achieve this supervisory convergence that isn't yet in place. Uh, second uh, example is internal models. Uh, approach to internal models uh, in different member states by different national competent authorities differs. Uh, what uh, we lacked when uh, looking at the work uh, with internal models were two things. One thing, of course, uh, uh, limited resources of EOPA itself. Uh, of course, uh, it is well to organize a conference, but uh, on a daily basis there should be people working on this issue. The other issue is very important, is access to information. Uh, the information flow between the national competent authorities, and we checked this on concrete examples, we didn't write these examples in, in our report, just not to make a shame and blame game uh, out of our report. Uh, but this functions uh, not very well. And also, EOPA was invented as an institution that would collect the flow of information and then share with other national competent authorities. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this still doesn't work uh, completely well. Uh, to some extent, yes, uh, but there are flaws, uh, uh, limitations, determined, by the way, also by legal regulations, by uh, legal authority of EOPA to get information, to make people to provide this information. One of the issues that we highlighted is access to individual firms' information by EOPA in the necessary cases when it is needed uh, to uh, do the job. And the third example and last example is uh, supervision of cross-border businesses. Uh, it depends on the legal structure of the supervised entity, not on the will, wish, and policies of the supervisor himself or herself. Because if you have a cross-border activity based on subsidiaries, okay, you have these uh, uh, colleges of supervisors, which do not always function perfectly well. This is another uh, observation of ours. But sometimes uh, for a small company with a subsidiary, one subsidiary in another country, uh, you shall create the supervisory college. Uh, and if huge company, huge uh, insurance business establishes itself via a branch of freedom of services, which uh, is not too pervasive, but still 8%, uh, this is data of VIOP, 8% of, of uh, uh, um, the, uh, premia, of, of uh, written premia, gross written premia, 8%, not too much, but not too little to uh, neglect it. Uh, then it already doesn't work. Uh, so this nationalistic approach is something that uh, makes, uh, makes um, a problem. And this fragmented, uh, fragmented uh, protection of policyholders, again, consumers, they are not protected equally well in all the member states. And I would wish they were. Uh, this sounds a bit political, but this coin has another side. Another very real side that you, many of you sitting in this hall, would understand perfectly well. The other side of the coin is competition conditions. Level playing field for the business participants. If it is not uh, uniform, it is not equal, uh, then competition will not be fair. And we should strive to get this fair competition. What is the way forward? As I said in the beginning, uh, uh, I'm just finishing. Uh, we uh, tend to read uh, literally the legal acts I took. Well, a regulation establishing a YOPA, 2009. And what I read, it was amazing. Uh, recital 34, it is a quotation of Jacques de la Rossier report. I know him. 
uh, I respect very much uh, this person, and it is truly uh, right that one quotation got into recital of a legal regulation, and it sounds, uh, as uh, the Dalla Rossiya report indicates, in essence, we have two alternatives. The first, chacun pour soi, beggar thy neighbor solutions. Or the second, enhanced, pragmatic, sensible European cooperation for the benefit of all to preserve an open world economy. This will bring undoubted economic gains. And ladies and gentlemen, this idea is not trivial. Uh, as we saw during our audit, there are different opinions, and I'm sure in the panel soon we will hear different opinions. But to my opinion and to the opinion of the auditors, it is just this way that could uh, uh, repair the situation. So thank you very much and looking forward to interesting discussions during the day. Thank you.